A common complaint that visitors have about Germany essentially boils down to consumerism, or more specifically, anti-consumerism. And I hear sentences all the time like, why is everything closed on Sunday? Or the Germans really don't seem to want to make money, and the customer is definitely not king here. The customer does not really seem to be very important. And I think at first glance, Germany is really like any other sort of Western country when it comes to the commoditization of life. In fact, convenience and online shopping has become so popular here that Germany is actually Amazon's biggest market outside of the US. However, for anyone that has spent a significant amount of time here, you will know that anti-consumer sentiment has been around for really a very long time. And I'm going to get into exactly why I fully identify with this in just a minute. The reasons for this are pretty complex and I don't pretend to really understand them all, but I think it has something to do with strong regulations, also with uh, high quality standards and sort of a culture of less is more. And I think also the church does play a little bit of a role in this. Now, this anti-consumerist stance is actually nothing new for me. I grew up in a rather anti-capitalistic household where money and material possessions were frowned upon. But for the majority of the UK, this is definitely not the norm. And one thing I do notice when I go back is the aggressive and pervasive nature of marketing and advertising in the UK. Now, don't get me wrong, I do actually like a good marketing campaign. I love sort of clever plays on words and some adverts can be really clever and iconic. And I think that most of us do actually like them to a certain extent. Some adverts get embedded into the culture of a country. But I would say the difference between Germany and the UK is really just the intensity and the prevalence of advertising and marketing. It's just more in your face in the UK. You know, every surface, every milk carton, every juice bottle, every bus exterior, taxi roof, it's all used for advertising. The empty space is really seen as a missed opportunity to capitalize on market share. And this goes for the whole service sector in the UK. There's much more of a focus on brand building, on storytelling, and on customer service. And I'm not saying this doesn't happen in Germany, but it's definitely a lot more subtle and a lot less extroverted. In fact, Germany has rather strict laws governing advertising, especially when it comes to children. So ads targeting children under the age of 14 are restricted on TV, in cinemas, and even in print. And things like tobacco and alcohol advertising are still pretty heavily restricted. What I will say is that the German customer is world renowned for being one of the most difficult. Highly suspicious, highly price sensitive, and also very quick to frustrate. I think foreign companies often have a hard time getting a foothold here. And examples like uh, Marks and Spencers or Walmart really are a testament to those who sort of ignore cultural behavior and cultural norms and don't do extensive market research. German culture does also seem to prioritize simplicity and practicality over extravagance and luxury. And many Germans are quite happy to live in a smaller apartment compared to the US or the UK. And I think in general, people sort of value or prioritize experiences over products. Now, of course, I'm generalizing here, but I do think that the culture of keeping up with the Germans is just doesn't really exist in Germany. You know, the old adage of we buy things we don't want with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like uh, definitely just doesn't really have any relevance here in this country. Having said that, there are certain areas in Germany which are definitely a lot more materialistic than others, and one of these would be Dusseldorf. You know, the desire to show off and flaunt what you have, uh, as in your material possessions, is definitely a lot stronger in Dusseldorf than it is, for example, in Hamburg. Uh, if you don't believe me, just go for a walk on the, on the Königsallee on a Saturday, and I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. I covered alternative healthcare in this video here, and in general, there does exist a huge range of alternative subcultures in Germany, which are all kind of based on very deep holistic values. Sustainability or Nachhaltigkeit is a huge buzzword at the moment, pretty much throughout the whole Western world, but this has really been the case for a very long time in Germany. Things such as green energy, passive housing, organic agriculture, homeopathy, alternative medicine, these are very well established in Germany and they kind of are rooted in values which transcend conventional commercialism. Please note I am referring to the philosophies and values which stand behind these brands, not the brands themselves, because I do concede, I do understand that all of this, all of these alternative things are very expensive. And so there is a little bit of a catch 22 when it comes to this kind of thing. 
Uh, but what I'm trying to say is basically a lot of these subcultures or actually just German culture in general is really geared towards long-term sustainable solutions and not quick fixes, which is really something that I fully associate with Germany and it's something that I can fully get on board with. Even though it may have taken a hit in recent years, the brand of Made in Germany really still is associated with long-term sustainable quality. But when it comes to household and consumer goods, Germans do really prioritize quality over quantity and really look to buy products that are going to last for a very long time. Another huge subculture in Germany are second-hand markets and shops. Now, this, of course, is not specific just to Germany. This really exists in many countries. The UK also has a pretty big flea market scene. But I think that Germany maybe goes a step further in that most cities usually host at least one flea market per week. And there are also a lot of initiatives and a lot of stores basically reusing and remaking things and reselling. I did already have a little bit of a rant about Spermu in one of my previous videos. But I think the phrase one man's trash is another man's treasure definitely is quite relevant in Germany because you can find uh, some gems on the street here in Germany if you're that way inclined and if you enjoy sort of refurbishing things you can actually find some good stuff on the street which other people have thrown out. The prevalence of the used goods market is also seen in the popularity of things like eBay Kleinanzeigen and Facebook Marketplace. In fact, I actually managed to sell quite a few items on eBay Kleinanzeigen last year. It was pretty insane the amount of interest I got. Uh, I got literally, I think, 10 to 20 responses within the first couple of minutes of posting my listing. My tip for getting rid of stuff on eBay is to take the time to take some very good high quality photos and to post it on Sunday afternoon. That's when everybody is checking the site. What I'm trying to get at is that there does seem to be sort of an embedded culture of reuse, repurposing and recycling things here and not everything has to be bought brand new. This is essentially again a culture which views consumerism as problematic and something to be railed against. Now, as I said at the beginning, I've never really been particularly materialistic, but what I have imbibed from German culture since living here is the tendency to go for quality over quantity. Uh, this actually was something I had to train. You know, if you grow up with not a lot of money, uh, really the default is to always just go for the cheapest thing. And price is really sort of the only filter you have, and you never really even think about anything else. But since living in Germany, I have definitely managed to change this aspect and I will often rather just save up uh, to buy something of quality rather than buying just the next available thing. Their billig kauft kauft zweimal or whoever buys cheap buys twice I do think it really is a very accurate and true statement and especially when talking about things like food or things that we're actually putting into our bodies I do think is very important to be mindful and to maybe think twice uh, before just going for the cheapest thing. So overall, this is a part of German culture that I can fully identify with and fully get on board with. And I think it just makes life a little less stressful and a little more meaningful. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you might wanna check out this video here. Otherwise, take care and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.